Parliament's presiding officers say they will meet tomorrow with all stakeholders, including the Public Works Minister, to assess and take stock of the damage caused by a massive fire today that woke up really many people in the area around Parliament in Cape Town. It's gutted sections of the old Assembly building as well as the National Assembly wing. Let's get you the reaction now from the Democratic Alliance and speak to its Deputy Chief Whip, Sivuwe Kwahube. Sivuwe, very good evening to you. Welcome to News at Prime. Just how troubled are you as the DA by the events of the last few hours? Uh, good evening, Tim McGill, and to your viewers. This is obviously a deeply concerning um, uh, turn of events. It is, uh, that is why we think it's absolutely important to quickly and urgently get to the bottom of this, because it's quite important to understand whether or not there was foul play involved in this fire that happened today, or whether there were te technical uh, faults that led to the fire. But ultimately, Parliament is a national key point, and it does not belong just to the people who are members of parliament or the staff of parliament, but to South Africa. And so it's absolutely critical that we get to the bottom of this. And we obviously uh, pay great tribute to the first responders who came um, and uh, to try and control the fire. But now it becomes, uh, it shifts the focus now, primarily to understanding what happened um, getting a report together by Parliament and having the Secretary of Parliament really briefing, particularly the whips, on what has gone on and what will happen going forward. And what, what a lot of people have reacted to in the last few hours is the revelation that a lone man has been arrested for apparently breaking into the building and stealing some of the, the, the I don't know, what shall we call them, some of the belongings of Parliament, shall we say tonight but people are saying how is it precisely because parliament is a national key point that one person was able to break in steal and start a fire that then raises serious questions about the level of security absolutely and that's why i'm saying that you know it, it is crucial that uh, as of tomorrow i know that the uh, chiefs of forum uh, which is a multi-party um uh, gathering of the different whips of the, of the different political parties represented in Parliament will be meeting tomorrow morning. And those are some of the questions that we're going to be asking because we are expecting a briefing from Parliament exactly what has gone on. Because, of course, Tim Gila, we also know that Parliament is under the guard and under the protection of the South African Police Service. And so it would really, and I mean, you know, large amounts of money are spent every single year for the protection services that are stationed at Parliament 24-7. And so it begs the question that really if there has been somebody who's been suspected um, of, of foul play in this fire, how is it that they were able to get through uh, past saps? How is it that they were able to get into a really heavily guarded um, uh, 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 building? And of course, we're also concerned about the damage now, Tembe Gila, because this is a huge historical building. Uh, for South Africa. There are massive, you know, uh, uh, records which are kept uh, in Parliament, many of which are the originals. There's a library in Parliament, and that's why the extent of the damage needs to be assessed very quickly so that we can make sure that w we know exactly what has been lost. And also then a recovery plan is needed quite swiftly. Um, uh, and that's why the Secretary of Parliament will need to be able to brief um, us in the coming days as to exactly how we're going to recover what is lost and also recover the building. Because what cannot happen is that we cannot allow the business of Parliament then to be stalled uh, by what has happened. And so we've got to get contingency plans in place very quickly because ultimately the country needs us to get back to work. You mentioned... Uh, Parliament being guarded 24-7, but that is apparently not happening if we're to go on the comments made by Nehau, the trade union today. They say there's been, in fact, a scaling down of overnight security on some days in Parliament. I think it's especially on weekends, and they're saying that is, in fact, what they believe has left Parliament ex exposed in this instance, if it is indeed a case of arson. And exactly that. Look, I mean, we, th that is why then we've got to ask the relevant questions. And as soon as we've got that report, Tim Begele, then we've got to hold people accountable. Because if there has been a scaling down, as Nehal has said, of which I can't confirm, if there has been a scaling down, which has led to there being a gap in the ability of parliament to be protected, then accountability must be called for. Because then we sit with the situation where now we've got a fire, and not the first of its kind, perhaps the largest yet, 
but we've had this before. And so these are some of the questions that we're going to be asking. And we can't have a situation where Parliament, again, will give us, it will take years um, to bring a report to Parliament in order for, for this situation to be assessed, because we need to get an understanding of what's going on and it needs to be rectified, but people must be held accountable from the officials to whoever else is, is, is responsible. But uh, there needs to be great accountability and soon, so that we can also make sure, as I said, what is more important for me to the people of South Africa is to say that we need to, as members of Parliament, get back to work as soon as possible. The problems of South Africa are humongous, and we mm. can't have a situation where we are stalling the work of Parliament because of this incident. So today's fire has also brought back the conversation about a fire that happened in Parliament last year, the Minister of Public Works, Patricia DeLille, saying that report has not been kept secret. It has been fairly easily accessible. What is your understanding of the level of occupation, occupational health and safety standards in the parliamentary precinct? Are those buildings safe? Because in that instance, we're now being told that that fire was started by an electrical fault, which then raises an issue about overall maintenance of the building, for example, even in the case today that we're hearing that in this case, early indications are that a valve linked to the sprinkler system had been closed. Yeah, and exactly that. And that's why I've been I'm mentioning the, the fire before, because ultimately, I mean, if there has been a consistent failure of maintenance in the building and in the precincts, which has now led us to this very tragic event, then once again, between public works, between the parliament as the institution itself, questions must be asked why this has not been happening. Because ultimately, we've got to make sure that people are held accountable. Um, and I mean, I, I note the comments that have been made by the minister, but those are th that report will now need to be read in together in conjunction with the report that will need to be uh, uh, tabled in parliament. Because we need to be able to see, has there been consistent failure to maintain that building? Have there been consistent failure to secure our national key point? Has there been consistent failure to scale down resources on the one side which have led to this? And if there are, then people must answer for those things and we need to make sure that people are held accountable and we rectify that. And so that's why I'm saying this can't be read in its entirety. It, it is, cannot be read in isolation, but it's going to have to be read together with the incidents which, has, uh, which have taken place up until now. I'd like to go back to your earlier point about the work of Parliament. The impression given today is very much that there'll be no impacts at all or just no disruption at all or very little disruption. So now we're hearing could go ahead at an alternate venue, for example. It could also be a hybrid event, as we've seen due to the pandemic. Do you really believe that there'll be no impact at all on the work of Parliament during this period of repairs? We need to demand that there isn't, uh, Tembe Gile, because as I said, I mean, the, the problems of our country require us all to be at work. South Africans are getting back to work and there's many things that we need to attend to. So we absolutely can't have a situation where the work of parliament is being stalled. When it comes to the opening of parliament, of course, there are many, uh, you know, various uh, 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 ceremonies which need to, which are accompanied by the event. But um, we've got a situation where, I mean, I saw that the city of Cape Town mayor, uh, Jordan Hill Lewis saying that he's been in touch with the Speaker of, uh, of the National Assembly to say that should, uh, the, the, should Parliament need an alternative venue, they're willing to step in and provide that. But at the end of the day, we also have seen Parliament transition from uh, having uh, the, the institution work in a hybrid manner. And so there's absolutely no reason why we cannot get back to work, and there's absolutely no reason why we cannot continue with the business of Parliament. A number of committees are meant to be beginning their work now towards the end uh, or the middle of toward from the middle to the end of january that needs to happen in co concurrently while we're dealing with this matter but we can't have a situation where we're stalling the, the important work that needs to be done let me ask you about uh, something else from the party reaction the eff is saying um devastating as this is it perhaps presents an opportunity to revisit an old conversation to do with taking parliament and moving it to pretoria strategic because People say then you'd have the union buildings and parliament in one space as well as the, the main offices, shall we say, of the various ministries. What is your position yeah. on that? Look, I mean, uh, I've, I, firstly, I mean, my view is that it, it's, uh, it perhaps is, is not the occasion uh, uh, for this kind of conversation. As you've said, it's an ongoing discussion which has, had, which has been had. And, of course, parliament must uh, occupy itself with understanding 
you know, you know, does it make financial sense? Is it financially viable to move Parliament um, to, you know, from the seat which has been the seat of the legislature here in Cape Town to Pretoria? I think we shouldn't, uh, you know, split hairs or um, be concerned about where the venue of Parliament, but perhaps we should be more concerned about whether or not Parliament is being effective in South Africa. And so I think the conversation should be looked at and, you know, looking at in, in the context of is it financially viable? Will it work? And uh, and and is the matter now urgent enough for us to to revisit it? Mm -hmm. But for me, I think the big priority, and I think ordinary South Africans are looking at to us to say, is, it doesn't matter whether you know Parliament is in Epi or Okanye in Cape Town. What matters is whether or not is Parliament working, and that's what we need to make sure that we 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 don't actually uh, see any stalling of the work that needs to be done, and we need to see a far more rigorous. Um, a, a, a legislative arm that mm. will insist on accountability a lot more now than ever before. Great to have your time. Thank you so much for being on News at Prime tonight.